there's a lot of new alternatives, but today we're going to take a real close look at the most common method used by body shops to fix or remove dents. It is important to note that every step that is shown in this video is essential in achieving a repair that's invisible and that lasts forever. Before beginning any project, it's always a good idea to wipe it clean with some wax and grease remover. So we'll just take care of that real quick. I did wheel out this door to see exactly where the dent was and to make sure I got all of it. We'll hit it with this real quick. Next, we're going to remove the paint using a 36 grit fiber resin disc. And we want to make sure that we take off enough of the paint so that we have filler, a little bit of metal, and then we have the DA'd paint. So right here we have a dent and we have a little ding right here. And the dent sort of extends out to here. So, we want to for sure make sure we take all that off. But we know the, the filler is going to probably feather out that far. So, we want to make sure the filler is going to be feathered to here. And so we're going to want to make sure that we have it grinded about out to there. Let me move the camera so you can see exactly what that looks like. And here's a closer shot. Again, this is the dent, the main one. We have a little ding right here. Main dent right here. The dent extends out to here. I can see it when I look at it from a, a, an angle. Now, when we spread the filler, we're going to come out to about here. It's going to end up feathering out to this line. And so we're going to want to make sure that we grind it out at least that far. To remove the paint and prepare the surface, we're going to be using one of two grinders. Either this or this. Those are the only two grinders you're going to see in a body shop. Again, a small grinder like this or a larger grinder like this. Using a fiber resin disc like this, 36 grit or 40. You won't see an angle grinder like that or even that. Even though I use that a lot in my videos, it's because this big guy uses a lot of air. So again, we're going to be using this with a brand new sharp disc or this with a brand new sharp disc. Again, if you prepare the surface correctly using a nice sharp fiber resin disc, your filler will be stuck there forever. So here we go. And we want to use a slow speed. Again, we never want to be rubbing or shining the metal. Mm-hmm. 
When spreading filler, you can use one of these guys or one of these guys, this is a metal one. And we're not going to DA this edge yet because we want nice rough surfaces for the filler to stick to. So we're just going to wipe this on and you can put a nice, a real tight coat on there first to really make sure it grabs. And that's good for a tight coat. And now we'll just put on our regular coat. And remember, we're just going to go about to here. And again, we're going to take off most of this, but I want to try to get this dent all in one, one, one uh, application. And that should be good. Just before the filler hardens, you can take off some excess with a Stanley Sureform, or I call this a cheese grater blade. So we're just going to come across there like that, and just we'll start with the ridges, taking off those ridges. And even if you did that much, that would save you some sandpaper and some sanding. So we're just going to drag that right across there and just take off some excess and you just you're just going to go a bunch of different directions and you can stop there if you want but we'll just keep going a little bit more And the better you get with one of these, the closer you'll get to almost having it perfect before you even sand. And I'll move the camera so I can get at it at a different angle. After taking off some excess with the cheese grater blade, we can either use a hog like this or a hand block like this. So I'm going to start with the hog just to take off just a little bit. And that should be good. 
I think we have just a little bit right here that might need a little extra coating. So let me fill that in. We'll finish sand it with 80. We'll DA sand this and give it a coat of primer. Now that we have our low spot filled in, we can finish this up. And I'm just gonna use the cheese grater just to take a little bit off. Again, so I don't have to, I just like using it. And we're going to let this harden up and then come back and finish it with 80 grit. So far we used 40 on this and 40 grit on this. And now we can just finish it up with some 80 grit on a medium board. And that's good. We're going to blow this off. DA sand it, tape it up, and prime it. Before I give it a coat of primer, I'll explain how I got it to this point. I knocked down the grinder scratches with the hog with 40 grit on it just to make it easier for the DA with 120 grit to feather the paint. After I got done with the 120 grit, I moved to 220 grit on this and this is a little palm DA sander and I just went out farther so that primer is only on prepared paint. Mask this off 
I masked off the door handle and I sanded down here. And then anything left that I needed to sand or prepare, I used a little scuff pad like this. And now we can give it a coat of primer. that little red spot was some glazing putty and it was wiped on so thin that I don't have to sand it. It was just to fill in a couple of uh, pits, uh, air bubble pits in the filler. That's the first coat. We're going to give it two more coats. And this will be the second coat. And this will be the third coat. After three coats of primer surfacer, this area is ready to be block sanded with 120 grit on a board such as this. Primed again, finished sanded with 220 or finer, and painted. I hope you enjoyed this video on the most common method used by body shops to fix or repair dents. And if you did, and you'd like to get my latest videos, don't forget to hit the subscribe button.